Hey everyone, this is Kyle with Simulation Lab in Brooklyn, New York. Back again with another tutorial using 3D Studio Max and Tyflow. And today we're going to be growing some coral looking stuff. So I made this animation it grows some coral icing. Um, but it's pretty cool. Um, it can interact with physics objects. You can I, I set this strawberry to be a little collider and kind of slams into it. Um, so it's pretty interactive. Uh, and it's a really useful new little algorithm that's built into Tyflow. It's called space colonization within the uh, growth operator. So that's what we're going to be covering today. It's going to be a pretty simple, hopefully relatively quick one. I'm just showing you how to use the space colonization algorithm. Um, but it can, can be used for anything. Um, you can grow different types of coral looking structures or anything. Um, so first things first, we're going to jump into max and unit setup. I got to set the generic units. One, you can do one centimeter. That's, that'll be good for what we're doing. Um, and then first things first, we're going to create an object to spawn to grow our coral looking stuff inside of. So I'll just create a cube. I think we're just going to do a cube for now. Just keep it simple. And uh, you could really use any shape you want. And do something like 200. Just the 200 cube. And we'll zero this out. And then object properties. I'm going to set this to not be renderable and display as box. Okay. Now we'll create our Typhlo object. And I'll stretch this out a little bit so you can see all the operators in the window here. That'll be good. All right. And we got our box there. Um, so first things first, we're going to create two separate events. First event is just going to be populating a bunch of particles inside of our box. And then we're going to use a second secondary event to, uh, to then grow um, and interpolate the um, the growth algorithm among those particles, right? So we're using the particles as a sort of substrate. Um, so we're going to set that to like 20,000 points, 20,000 particles for now. And uh, we'll do a um, um, position object. Set this to be volume. And we'll pick our cube. So now we got a shit ton of particles inside of that cube. Awesome. And we don't need to see those. We'll uh, turn off our display operator. Okay, so for the second event, um, we'll go ahead and just create one particle at frame zero. And you can see it's, it's right there, but we want to be able to control where that's at. So we'll do a position icon operator. It tosses this in there. And we'll go ahead and create our under helpers, tie flow, tie icon. So this doesn't really matter where it's at or what orientation it's in. Just for clarity's sake, you don't really need to do this, but I'm just going to point the arrow upward. Um, it doesn't really follow the arrow because we're going to be using the pivot of this little icon. You could really use anything you want, but we'll just do a pivot for now. And we'll zero this out and maybe make, and Z will make it 150 or 100 yeah because we yeah because this is 200 so that's right in the middle of the box now um, and you could play with this you could uh, put the icon wherever you want wherever you want the growth to start growing from I'm gonna change the color of this so you can see a little better against the black screen there you go um, so let's bring over our tie flow panel here again and uh, yeah, let's start uh, start growing some stuff. So we'll toss in a growth operator. And instead of DLA, we'll change this to space colonization. Um, and in our seed radius, we'll do something like, I don't know, 1.5 expansion. I don't know, do 20. Kill distance, we'll set this to 10. We'll keep this, we'll keep everything else the way it is and we'll maybe tweak stuff if we need to. And then I'll do a particle bind. Maybe we'll absolute distance. We'll set this to 10. And 
you'll set a little bit of a uh, actually max binds will set to one and everything else should be good I didn't I don't want to do family bind or anything so we'll, we'll, we'll leave that the way it is for right now and just kind of see how it works um, so that should oh one thing I forgot to do is pick my icon so there you go see now it start see it's starting to work there so that's kind of cool so now from here um, this is not totally necessary but we'll put in a collision operator and we'll pick our box that's not totally necessary um, it will grow within the bounds of the box and stop at the extremities of the box wherever it hits the box it'll stop growing that's kind of how the algorithm works I guess um, so from here we don't really need our tie flow uh, object anymore um, we might come back to it actually I lied we need this we're gonna put a tie splines operator in here um, so toss that in there go create new that's going to create a tie splines operator and then we're going to set this to bind to siblings um, okay and then we'll get rid of this for now we'll turn off our display dots so now you can see our tie splines in there cool and then we'll go ahead and click this little button right there so we can see our spline geometry being created and we'll set the radius to something like one two no, no, two um, and then if we go down one step in our stack here to this tie splines uh, object we're gonna go down to weld knots in our post processing actually if we do weld knots you can see what happens there um, puts in a ton of extra subdivisions and we really don't care about those because we're gonna wrap everything with a time measure this is just one way of doing it um, you could just keep this the way it is if you if you like this look um, you can kind of see the um, uh, intersections the birthing happening here which if you don't care about that if you're doing like a sort of long distance uh, view of this thing growing then maybe you don't care about that um, so if uh, if you like the way that looks awesome you can maybe tweak the uh, settings here maybe set this to 10 yeah looking kind of weird but all right, if you like that, sure. Um, regardless, uh, we don't care about binding. Well, sorry, we don't care about welding the knots. So we're just gonna set this to not weld them because um, we're gonna wrap them all anyway. So we'll leave this the way this is. Um, and then we're, one thing we're gonna have to do is, uh, so if we grow this out a little bit more, yeah, that's cool. What we might need to do is we'll set our frame length to something like 300. Give us a little bit more on the timeline there, so we grow that out, and it's a uh, it's a pretty heavy sim, but it's looking pretty cool so far. So I think we'll keep it like that. Uh, we might want to set our radius to something like a little smaller, maybe like 1.5. Yeah. Um. So that's looking pretty cool. So I like that. Uh, we'll turn back our edge faces on for right now and what we're going to have to do is we're going to subdivide all of these little segments here so we'll go down to toss in our subdivide up modifier there and that's going to take a little while to process because it's still a cpu based process um, but once it finishes that'll give us plenty of vertices for the tie measure to latch onto and it'll make a really nice looking mesh so that's pretty good. Um, so we can turn off our edge faces. And we'll go under geometry, go to tie flow, tie measure, toss in a tie measure. And there, set this to blob mesh, we'll keep that as is. We'll pick our tie splines. All right, cool. So it wrapped everything. Um, and then from here we can play with this a little bit maybe set the absolute radius to something like one and voxel filtering will set it to Gaussian cool um, and then in our layers we'll just go ahead and turn off our tie splines because we don't need to see those so that's looking pretty cool looks kind of like a, 
you could use this for all kinds of stuff. I mean, this kind of looks like uh, brain cells or veins or something. Um, but yeah, I mean, you, could, you could play with this and do all kinds of stuff. So if you look at our edge faces, obviously it's a pretty heavy, heavy mesh. Uh, so it takes a while to sim that out. Um, but there's all kinds of stuff you can do with this. You can, we'll do a relax modifier on it. So we set that to one and I don't know, something like five. Yeah, it's looking pretty cool. It's looking like a kind of more brain cell-ish, kind of like that. You can see the little synapses in there growing. Pretty neat. And you can smooth that out. Um, I think for now that's looking pretty cool. Maybe uh, we can increase the uh, radius a little bit. Set that back to like 1.5. point two yeah I don't know yeah so like I said in the beginning of the tutorial you can um, substitute this cube for any other kind of geometry you want um, you know like if you wanted to spawn this inside of uh, some 3d text you could do it that way you can kind of grow some veins or brain cell looking things or whatever inside of uh, inside of uh, some 3D text or some, uh, you know, just any kind of other geometry you can, you can place the cube with. So it's pretty versatile. Um, anyway, that, that's pretty much it for the tutorial. Um, so if you guys have any questions about how any of this stuff works, please leave them in the comment section below. Um, and if you guys liked this uh, scene, uh, I could probably save it and toss it on uh, modulator, make a modulator project for it so you guys can download the project files um, hopefully it was a pretty easy step-by-step, -step, uh, tutorial to make something like this. Um, but yeah, experiment, experiment with, uh, all kinds of other geometry. Um, looking forward to seeing you, what you guys make. If you guys make something cool, uh, please link a YouTube link or whatever in the, uh, comment section below. We want to see what you're, what you're, what you're making. Um, all right guys. Uh, so I, I I'm not going to do with any render settings set up or anything like that. I did that in a couple other tutorials. Um. But uh, yeah, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below in the comment section. And if you guys like the tutorial, please subscribe and smash the like button. Um, if you guys like this, I'll continue making these tutorials uh, if you guys find them to be useful. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching, and we'll talk to you soon.